Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 250, featuring the first of a two-part interview series with Jerzy, a composer, a music a musical composer from the country of Poland. Now Jerzy, uh, he does a lot of work with the Atari 8-bit, the ZX, uh, 81 ZX Spectrum, Timex, uh, Sinclair, that, um, those uh, series of machines. He also does work with the Amiga 500, the 1200, and much, much more. He also uh, does a lot of my favorite uh, compositions in the chiptune genre, which means uh, music composed without any samples. It's just all created uh, directly from the, uh, the computer hardware itself. It's really, really cool stuff. And uh, in my opinion, Yerjme is one of the best, if not the best, uh, in this style. So I really was happy to get him on and chat with him. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Mr. Yerjme. All right, folks, I am here with one of the greatest chiptune composers of all time. A uh, man by the name of Yerzhmi. He has done work for the, or done chiptunes for the, uh, I guess, ZX Spectrum, or the ZX, I guess I should say. It's probably his uh, weapon of choice, but he's also done tunes for the Amiga, the Atari ST, and the Atari 8-bit computers. Is that right? Uh, for 8-bit, uh, there was uh, some uh, incident, you might, you might say. Uh, but uh, it wasn't uh, exactly uh, any real chip tune um, because uh, Atari 8-bit uh, has a um, pocket chip, uh, so it uh, has uh, four channels, and with CPU uh, they can play uh, mod files like from uh, like digital music, like from uh, Amiga. So. Uh, I made uh, some music collection, especially to to prove to the people that uh, it can be done. Of course, it uh, um, they, they were using this um, this uh, method this way uh, earlier. However, I wanted to make uh, a full music collection for uh, only 64 kilobytes, so every mod was about uh, five. Uh, uh, Mm, what mm, five zero? Was it fifty kilobytes? Uh, big. Okay. <laughs> Is it even in English? That seems to be one of the aspirations of chiptune composers. I mean, that's sort of the idea, right? You really want to make a, you want to make songs in very limited file sizes, uh, not using samples, digitized samples, or real quote unquote instruments. Is that true? Would you say? Uh, you mean inspirations? Now, why don't we back up and just say how how do you define a chiptune? Uh huh. Well. Uh, um... It's uh, actually hard to say uh, because uh, first definition was simply uh, a very very small music file, uh, usually for uh, Amiga. Uh, however, uh, now uh, we use uh, this this word for for uh, all synthetic music from, for example, for uh, 8-bit computers. And uh, uh, sometimes um, uh, people use, uh, you know, some big machines, PC or, or some other stuff, and uh, they call it uh, fake bit <laughs> because it's not 8 bit, it's fake bit, and so on and so on. For me, it's simply uh, standard synthetic music uh, for uh, an 8 bit computer or uh, for Amiga, for example, and so on and so on. One of the things I know you've done 
instead of just using software uh, to make songs, you actually have designed some of your own hardware, right? Uh, once again. Uh, you designed some of your own hardware, like uh, you have a interface with the... No, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, this hardware guy type. Uh, I rather use some uh, already existing uh, hardware. However, uh, from time to time, uh, I try to force other people with brute force, you know, uh, to build some uh, um, some interfaces. It was, uh, for example, um, for interface AY interface for uh, ZX Spectrum 48, uh, because in standard uh, Spectrum 48 has only beeper sound and. Uh, uh, for example, similar situation was with, uh, uh, but it was actually not not for making music. It was just for uh, bring it back. Uh, there is a Commodore uh, 264, which is a Commodore Plus uh, 4, uh, Commodore 16, and so on. And uh, many years ago, uh, they had uh, a very similar thing. It was called a, a seat card. Simply, they attach uh, seat uh, chip to their machines, uh, so I was forcing them on on uh, Commodore Plus for forum for many years, and finally, uh, finally, they, they, uh, some some guys started to produce this stuff again. So uh, this is how it works. It also goes for ZX81 because this computer has actually no sound at all. But in the 80s, it was uh, possible to buy uh, some um, AY interfaces. And uh, it was a similar situation. I entered the ZX81 forum, and I was so boring. <laughs> so finally, they had to uh, make um, those uh, interfaces uh, alive again, uh, just for me to shut up, you know. So you told me last time you got started with making music back in 1989 on the, the ZX Spectrum. Just wondering, how did the, were you already doing music, maybe playing guitars or something like that? I mean, how did you get drawn into this world of uh, chip tunes and computer music? Actually, it was um, a little bit um, in opposite, uh, like you said, because uh, uh, I wanted to make um, uh, regular electronic music you know, like Jean-Michel Jarre, or I don't Tang know. Tangerine Dream. And Tangerine all. Dream and yeah. so on. But uh, uh, all those synthesizers were so uh, so uh, expensive. So I thought maybe uh, I could start with uh, regular home computers. And uh, actually, from the start, my first choice was... Uh, uh, somehow it was Spectrum 48, and uh, actually it was um, a, a version, uh, you could say a clone of Spectrum uh, uh, 48. Uh, it's uh, made in America, and uh, and not only this is Timex. Mm. Do we see it? Oh, this is it. Uh, America and Portugal. So this is this machine, uh, and uh, this is how it started. Um, uh, so I indeed uh, later started to make some regular electronic music, but it was uh, several years ago, you know, when I bought some uh, equipment and so on and so on. So that was the actual ZX that you composed your first tunes on that you just showed us? Uh, sorry. Was that the your first uh, ZX that you were holding up there? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, somewhere uh, my first Timex. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't look as beautiful as this. Yeah, that's... <laughs> you know, I was using it hard, so... Uh, what can I say? It works, but uh, it's retired now. 
Mm -hmm. So before you got into electronic music, had you taken classes, music classes, uh, no. or played piano, or how how did you learn the the musical part of it? Uh, I know what what you mean now. No, no, no. Uh, uh, I don't know this all musical notation stuff. Uh, it's it's um, totally unknown to me, and uh, I was uh, simply you know trying trial and error stuff. Uh, to 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 learn something, and I don't know if it worked. <laughs> you guys must judge it. Uh, however, uh, no, no, I, I I don't have any theoretical uh, basics and so on. Then when you first started off, it was just you and some some friends doing some little games and demos and things of that sort. Uh, yes. Uh, mm, once, like I said before, it was someday my bra in the 80s. Uh, we were very, very small teenagers. My brother uh, came home and he said, "You know, we with my friend we are making a game." So I, I thought this is this is totally impossible that somebody can uh, make his own game at home. So I wanted to, uh, you know, to meet the guy, and it was uh, our first coder, Mr. Hangman, <laughs> and uh, uh, it ended up in this way that uh, my brother, some some time ago, you know, he got bored with this; he wasn't uh, interested any longer. However, I uh, stick with the uh, Spectrum. It seems like for my entire life. <laughs> what is it about? The, I saw where you said that the ZX Spectrum 48K with the AY interface was your weapon of choice. And what, yeah. what is it about that? And, you know, I think you've done some amazing work on that. And I'm just wondering what what is it about that particular setup that you like so much? Uh, actually, it's a very very uh, primitive answer because it looks nice. <laughs> you know, I. I saw all those um, Commodore 64 and uh, Ataris, and when when I saw this, this is original Robert Cade uh, ZX Spectrum 48. I said, "Ah, oh, I must have this one because it looks so well." And um, then, uh, of course. Um, uh, you know, I was learning more and more about the hardware, so uh, uh, I learned that uh, there is this uh, AY interface um, possible to, to connect and so on. Uh, so uh, this collection was growing and growing. So this is for those who might not know, what is the AY all about? Uh, once again, excuse me. What is the AY interface? What is the AY chip? Uh, AY chip was uh, actually in um, a lot of uh, of hardware back in the days. Um, it's it's if I recall, it's uh, in MSX computers, in uh, uh, Amstrad CPC, Amstrad Schneider. In uh, also in AY interfaces for ZX81, uh, and uh, it's uh, present in uh, Atari ST, uh, which is this, for example, a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, very good machine. However, uh, uh, in Atari ST, uh, there is. Uh, uh, Japanese uh, clone of the AY, uh, which is Yamaha. And this is a uh, very nice uh, chip. I don't know any uh, technical stuff, actually, because I don't need it. It has only three channels, plus uh, wise noise uh, generator. Uh, and you can make some not so, not so bad music, I hope, <laughs> with this. So you haven't done any work with the Commodore 64 and the SID chip? Uh, no. Somehow, um, I don't know why. Probably, um, I, su I suppose, and I suspect probably because 
Yeah. It's very complicated, especially uh, when you get used to uh, AUI chip, which is rather simple, or even very simple, might be. Um, uh, but uh, the seed chip is uh, really very complicated to, to use, so uh, I suppose I'm simply too stupid for it. <laughs> when did you first start to get recognized for your music? Mm, I don't know if I understand. Well, when did you know you first? What was your first song that people started to? And it started to get around and people started to uh, contact you uh, and I mean <laughs> basically how did you establish your reputation uh, the f first song uh, there were two uh, the first one I remember but I don't recall the demo um, but it was in um, there were two demos um, uh, simply uh, named from uh, from a year so one demo was uh, 96 demo and one was probably uh, 97 if I recall. Uh, they, were, they were very crap demos for ZX Spectrum. However, one of the song um, uh, people wanted uh, wanted me to, to play it uh, over and over again. Uh, some friends, you know, when, when they uh, were coming to, to, to my house. So, so it was kind of torture. Uh, uh, what was the name of that song? I, I don't remember at the moment, really. Um, but, uh, uh, like you know, I, I don't uh, uh, remember any titles of, of my songs, of, of those, uh, let's say, of those albums, uh, compilations and so on. So uh, I have no idea, <laughs> and I, I don't want I don't want to sing it <laughs> to you uh, now uh, because it's maybe it's after too... maybe after the beer you can sing it. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> um, but uh, later, uh, when internet became more popular, um, and I suppose this is actually what you mean. Uh, there was a, a song. Um, from a British, uh, ah, Polish British demo, uh, Boa, uh, bunch, uh, bunch of Earths, <laughs> and uh, it uh, it was uh, actually I don't know why people like this song because I think it's rather crap, but uh, I could I could say it was the star because uh, somehow everybody was interested in this not so good song, I could say. And uh, this demo is uh, probably on our uh, group's site, so you can check it out. It's some 90s style of dance music, something like that. Not very technical for, for us for AY trip. Eventually, you formed a band, right? Or you got invited to a band called AY Writers, and these actually tour around and put on concerts. Well, um, if I recall, it was uh, 2002, mm. and the idea was uh, the idea was actually stolen from uh, Atari ST band uh, YM Rockers. Uh, but of course, I wrote uh, email. To them and ask it, you know, guys, you have so cool band. Do you have any objections if I will, you know, hijack this idea 
uh, and call it uh, uh, AY Riders. So, of course, they they have uh, they had uh, nothing against it, and uh, we actually uh, from time to time uh, we each other uh, call uh, as you know uh, something like um, uh, brother band, you know each other. I mean, uh, so. Um, so it was uh, 2002, uh, if I recall, and uh, I simply uh, invited uh, several uh, uh, musicians from uh, uh, from ZX Spectrum scene, scene and uh, uh, they, they agreed. So um, now we have. Uh, uh, like I mentioned before, we had we have uh, Gasman from UK, Factor Six and uh, TDM from Czech Republic, and uh, Magus and uh, Sijev from uh, from Russia, and probably there there will be some uh, additional member uh, Zoom, but uh, for now I don't have any news about it, so. Uh, it's hard to tell. You said before when you put on these concerts, you got pretty good turnouts, right? Two or three hundred people will show up. Um, it's it, it, it depends because um, um, it depends of uh, of event, of um, organizers. Um, uh, for example, uh, it even depends uh, on uh, on um, place. Uh, but um, it happens uh, sometimes that uh, there are, uh, like like you mentioned, uh, 300 over actually, uh, 300 uh, people. Sometimes uh, it's some small. Uh, it might be some smaller event, like it was uh, probably in uh, in Slovakia, uh, because also the. Um, the room was uh, much smaller, I, I could say, um, and sometimes uh, we played some concerts on uh, computer parties. So um, when uh, people mostly come, you know, for the party itself, and of course to drink. But by the way, they can take a look. Uh, on, on this concert, so it was on uh, also on Slovakia um, uh, on Forever Party. Uh, once it was uh, also in Poland. Uh, sometimes we we play some concerts um, not together, but you know uh, everybody plays some uh, solo stuff. Uh, I made it several times already. But um, the most active person uh, in this area is uh, Gasman, uh, who is playing concerts uh, on his um, on his spectrum. Uh, even uh, as far as I know, even several uh, times uh, a year on uh, many uh, parties, even those uh, bigger ones. So sometimes Amiga and PC fans are forced to listen to ZX Spectrum <laughs> chip tune music for an hour, for, for example, which I imagine might be a bit hard for them, <laughs> but it's, it's fun. Well, let's talk about the Amiga then, a system that I'm most familiar with. You've done some music with that using uh, Octomede. Yes, I use, um, mostly I use Amiga 500, which is this giant stuff <laughs> and beautiful, of course. And uh, now somehow, you're making a lot of people jealous with all these computers you've got. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you have seen already ZX81, but <laughs> here it is, very small. But I have uh, a, a lot more. I actually I should start. I don't know selling it <laughs> because this. Uh, this place is uh, far too small. Anyway, they kind of uh, remind me of those, you know, those yeah. famous guitar players, and they have the room with you know twenty, thirty guitars everywhere, and you know they're quite proud of their collections. Except you, you collect all these uh, old computers. 
Yes, and I have a lot of them. I suppose... Um, Some of them probably even go up to 11, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Uh, excuse me. Said some of them probably even go up to eleven. Ah, uh, I, I don't. I <laughs> oh, don't never mind. Bad stuff. joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know my knowledge about English is mostly to say hot dog or something like that. So I'm not very good at it. Uh, Amiga, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I don't use Protracker. I know that everybody loves Protracker, but this is some. Uh, some uh, cult uh, utility, but I don't know. For me, uh, it's uh, too simple. And uh, finally, I found uh, Octamed, and I use it uh, since that time. Uh, and I must say, uh, this is very very good uh, tool. Uh, of course, uh, if you would like to make some uh, eight channels music on it on uh, uh, standard Amiga 500, it is possible, but the sound quality isn't um, as good as you might as you might expect. So uh, mostly, I do it in this way that uh, I use simply four tracks uh, on uh, Octamed on Amiga 500. And I have uh, um, uh, simply the second Amiga uh, with uh, uh, Digi Booster, Digi Booster. Cor please correct me, because <laughs> I'm not sure. And this is a, a program, um, especially for bigger Amigas. Um, uh, I use uh, eight channels on uh, on standard uh, zero twenty CPU, and this is uh, really enough. I I I must say this is a very very good uh, program too and machine. <laughs> what the system that you use to create your album uh, Rave is illegal. Yeah. Uh, is that system. right? That was on the Amiga five hundred. Uh. No, you know, this is a question of uh, developer and user. Theoretically, yes, because uh, you can uh, load this, uh, uh, this stuff into uh, regular uh, Amiga 500s. Of course, it, uh, it, would, uh, it must have um, uh, one megabyte of uh, chip RAM because of uh, samples. Uh, this would be required. However, uh, except of this, um, it would be a very standard machine. But you know, uh, uh, saving, loading, and stuff from uh, uh, from a standard uh, FDD uh, disk drive, it would be some kind of torture. So uh, I actually use the um, uh, ACA five hundred is. Uh, very new uh, interface, and uh, then you have uh, something about uh, two megabytes of uh, additional, anyway, uh, megabytes of RAM, and uh, from from this interface I took this uh, uh, lacking uh, uh, kilobytes for uh, for samples and um, mass storage, uh, which, which is very uh, comfortable because. It's a CF card, so you have simply a hard drive. So it was kind of developer stuff, but it must work on any final machine. Uh, like I said, the only requirement is uh, uh, one megabyte of uh, cheap RAM. They needed an album for the Amiga 1200 as well, right? The yes. Retro Beat. I was listening yeah. to that last night, quite cool. I guess there's a pretty big difference between going from the, this 500 to the 1200 system. Uh, it was because um, all my life I had only uh, Amiga 500 or several of them. Mm. However, I was trying uh, a very long time to, to get the um, 1200 and uh, uh, finally, uh, finally, I managed to to buy one, 
but it was uh, something like a year or two years ago. So I'm very, very fresh and very new user of this machine. And on, on this Amiga, I use this DigiBooster uh, program with full uh, eight channels with uh, independent volumes for, for every channel, which is very important. Uh, you don't have it on uh, Amiga 500. So, um, yes, it was strange uh, because, you know, uh, suddenly I had a system, something looking like Windows, because, you know, on, uh, on Amiga 500, I, I was only using some uh, tools, utilities. Uh, so uh, it, was, it was strange, I had to learn everything. Uh, but uh, I must admit I'm uh, rather pretty content about this, this album, which is rather rare phenomenon. Uh, but uh, it was it was real fun to make it. Uh, I connected one of my uh, professional synthesizers, uh, one of Yamaha's, uh, to the sampler and uh, I was uh, preparing my own instruments and I felt really like it was uh, the 90s again. It was very, very nice. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with part two of my interview with Mr. Yerzhny. A lot of great stuff coming up, and I know you guys will like uh, hearing his music. So I'm going to put some links in the show notes to his various web pages. Uh, go check it out. I mean, most of the stuff you can get for free, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, really great. Uh, music from all occasions. Uh, as always, I want to thank you very, 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 very much, guys. Uh, maybe, maybe one more very. Uh, for supporting me in my efforts at preserving the video game and the history here at YouTube. It uh, really means a lot to me, guys. You just don't know. Uh, if you would like to support the show, just go to the Patreon uh, link in the show notes. And remember, you can sign up for any amount you want. If you want to put a dollar a month into, the, into this, a dollar an episode, uh, five dollars, you know, whatever you're more, most comfortable with, uh, it all makes a difference, and I greatly appreciate that. And also, you'll get the uh, access to those Google Air Hangouts and bonus podcasts. So it's a well worth the time. All right, news from the Nat King. Wow. It's a pretty funny news here. Uh, the first is apparently Warner Brothers, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to uh, option the rights to make a Space Invaders movie. Now, I've heard they're, they thought about getting Michael Bay to direct this, but apparently he thinks it's a little bit too heavy and the you know, drama and characters a little too deep for him, so he's passed on it. But uh, hopefully we'll hear more about this as the details emerge. Uh, second piece is that uh, Baldur's Gate has a, I don't know if this comic book has been out for a while, they're just not bringing Minskin to it. But anyway, there's a comic book coming out called Legends of Baldur's Gate uh, from IDW Comics. You know, I'm not actually familiar with them, and I guess it must be kind of a, a smaller house. <laughs> Any comic books guys are, uh, could tell me more about it. But anyway, this, this uh, Baldur's Gate comic book looks pretty cool. I don't know anything else about it really, but I thought I would mention it in case you want to find out more about that. And then also some uh, notes from GOG, uh, goodoldgames.com. Uh, the Divinity Original Sin is there now. It's uh, $40. And remember, with, the, uh, with good old games, you don't have to worry about any copy protection or anything like that. Uh, they've also got a couple other games I thought I would recommend while I was uh, dealing with the site. Uh, one is uh, Gray Matter. Uh, this was Jane Jensen's new game. I'm not, I think it might have come out in December. Uh, I'm not really sure <laughs> actually when that came out, but it's new, uh, or at least relatively new on GOG. Now, that's on sale for $9.99. If you liked uh, Gabriel Knight, uh, she's, uh, that's a Jane Jensen game. She also did some work on the, uh, some of the King's Quest titles and uh, maybe some other stuff too. I uh, can't think of it right off the top of my head. But anyway, the new game looks pretty good, uh, so go check that out if you liked her stuff. And then uh, Bad uh, Mojo Redux is up there. I was kind of surprised to see this. That's only $5.99. Uh, and man, that is a, one of the weirdest disturbing, uh, in a good way, uh, kind of adventure games I've ever played. Just really far out stuff. Kind of, if you've ever read that uh, book, what is it, uh, Metamorph Metamorphosis, I think. Uh, is it, uh, Kafka thing? <laughs> anyway, it's just really far out stuff about a guy that turns into a cockroach. And this. I just haven't ever played anything even remotely like it, so I thought I'd mention that too. It's only $5.99, and uh, all those games, 
great deals at goodoldgames.com. So go check that out. So what about that ale of the week? Well, uh, this week I've got another one that uh, Mr. Reese from the uh, Coburn's uh, Liquor Store recommended. This is the Killer Penguin, and it's a barley wine ale. And these are, I don't know about where you're from, but it's getting very difficult. It's one of my favorite uh, styles, and it's getting very difficult to find here for some reason. I guess it's not that popular. Uh, anyway, I love the, the style of uh, barley wine, so I wanted to get this. It's from the uh, Boulder Beer Company out of Boulder, Colorado. And it's a, let's see what else, 10% alcohol by volume, so definitely not something you'd want to chug. You know, take it, anything above, uh, you know, 6 7%, you really have to be careful with. Uh, let's see, dark garnet red in color, undertones of candy fruit. Uh, Killer Penguin is an aggressive, full flavored barley wine style ale and a perfect beer to share among friends. Uh, thankfully, I have no friends, so I won't have to share. <laughs> now, once a year, we release a very limited amount of Killer Penguin, blah, blah, blah. Discover all of our award-winning beers, blah, blah, blah. Colorado's first micro brewer. Now notice they've got this kind of uh, Maker's Mark style uh, wax or plasticky uh, lid on this thing. So I <laughs> thought I'd try to document my sorry efforts to open it. So but that's coming up here. All right, so how can I get this thing open? I'll start with the, uh, the rat method. Let's see if that'll, no. Now that's not working at all. Uh, let's see, maybe the uh, trusty axe. Probably gonna be a little dangerous. I guess we will stick with the old Bear Grylls survival knife. So that'll be fun. I think I've actually used this for anything else, so. It's got this nice uh, serrated edge on it. Should just cut right through that wax. I knew this thing would come in handy. And a lot of people die every year from dehydration because they can't get the wax good off of their <laughs> overpriced ale. Okay, actually this wasn't overpriced at all. It was only nine dollars for this. Which, uh, you know, I was surprised. I thought that was would be a lot more with the. It's got the wax. On. Let's see if I can get this open now. I should have used the, the axe on this thing. <laughs> That's really on there good. I guess this is a good test of, uh, are you too drunk to... Oh crap, almost opened it. That very gross knife. That's a pretty serious knife. Uh, I think we're going to get it this time. Oh, there we go. And it's open. <laughs> uh, I'm worn out now. I think I earned this beer. Pour a little bit in here and get an idea for the color. Oh, so you see very nice uh, bronzy orange color. Anyway, let's pour the rest here in the rather excellent gritty one. Let's see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this killer penguin here in the rather excellent drinking horn. <sighs> I've been trying to uh, detect an aroma here. It's a little bit of a malty. Uh, aroma, a little bit of a marshmallow uh, like quality, but it's very hard to, you know, you really have to, to, to snort to uh, detect it. So it's definitely not very pungent. But anyway, let's give it a, let's give it a taste. Okay, taste-wise, this is quite nice. You get a lot of that uh, a sort of uh, uh, hoppiness, caramel, chocolate-covered cherry uh, flavor, a little bit of bitterness. Uh, but not too bad. Uh, just about right. Uh, maybe just a little too bitter, uh, but just about right. It's a really nice uh, balance of flavors here. Real nice, thick, creamy uh, texture to it. Uh, just all around, really good stuff. I'm going to try one more time here. You know, just, just phenomenal stuff. I don't know how uh, you wouldn't like this if you're into ale, especially the uh, a barley wine style, so I'm gonna go a full five out of five drink ones on this. It's the first time, uh, <laughs> actually, that uh, one of the ones Reese recommended turned out to be uh, A-OK, -okay. so he's got some more lined up he wants me to try for a future episode, so maybe we'll keep those uh, going. All right, so I was looking for quotations about music, and I found one that I just thought was really fantastic, from Plato, actually. Uh, the Greek philosopher, <laughs> I'm sure you guys know, 
Plato is. Anyway, here it goes. Music is a moral law. It gives soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and to everything. See you guys next week. Wesley, what about the RUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist.